where do you see us ending up if we do not have men starting to embrace traditional masculinity again? What's interesting that if you study cross-cultural studies of uh, initiation, masculine initiation, there's a pattern of movement away from the world of the mother into the world of the father. But, it, but it's, a, it's a two-pronged approach to the father. It's called atonement. So the world of the mother is the world of matter, is the world of sensation, is the world of comfort, is the world of mommy. It's the matrix, even the word matter, mommy, matriarch, matrix. It's hmm. the material uh, maya that we're hypnotized by. Right, so like God the Father, Mother Earth kind of thing. Right, pattern in the matter. And so for a, a little boy, it's very, for girls and boys, it's very different because there's a movement away from the, uh, the, the integrated ego with the mother that both boys and girls have, both baby boys and girls have. They think that they are their mother because we come out of the, they come out of the matter of our mother. I was in my mother. You're in your mother. We're made of the stuff of right. our mother. And, we're in the, and then we come out. And then there's an ego split at some point where the baby recognizes, oh, I'm not my mother. But for a little girl, that happens once. Oh, I'm, I'm not my mother's ego. She's there. I'm here. But for a boy, it happens twice. Hmm. And then it continues. And not only does it happen twice, it needs to be consistently supported. That's why these people who say, Oh, By twice, you don't you... need to be taught to be a man. Why does anybody have to teach you to be a man? You should just know how to be a man. They don't understand. They don't understand anything. They don't understand biology. They don't understand psychology. They don't understand anthropology. Because we, we all have, we all come in in many, in, in many ways like our mother. Hmm. But then there has to be a movement towards something that is above, which is father. And a boy has to do that. They call it the Oedipal phase. That's according to... Freud. So that that two things is like one, he realized, oh, I'm not my mother. And then the second one is, oh, I'm not even female. I'm, right. I'm something different. Right. That's okay. a crisis. Hmm. I don't think people give enough uh, credence to the to the fact that that's a crisis for a little bit. It's a, that's, a, that's a split within the right. ego that happens around the age of four. Now, that's imagine you don't have a father. You don't have a father figure. You have no po positive role model in your life. When that split happens, what happens? It doesn't happen. Right. The little boy remains like a little girl in his thinking and his emotions and his behavior. He'll grow a penis. He'll grow hair. He'll get a deep voice. He'll gain muscle. But he'll also still continue to think and feel like his mom because he never got a chance to be mirrored by. And Robert Bly calls it fed the, the, the father's food by his presence. There's a, there's a transference of, a, of an energy that by having a father in the home, the boy receives. Right. I remember just, just by watching my dad, I became like him. He didn't, I didn't even have to teach me anything. He did. Of course, you're obsessed with being like him, right? He was your hero. He was the Superman, right? I was afraid of my dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, my dad was <laughs> pretty tough. It's his presence, though, and it's, okay. and it's for every father. And that's why it's important. Number one, I say the father crisis isn't just, it's just fatherlessness. That's a part of it, but weak fathers. Hmm. Because they grew up the same way, you know, in the same effeminate, matri matriarchal, fatherless culture. And so our fathers and our father's fathers, this is, we're about the third or fourth generation of fatherlessness in that regard.